beautiful. We're here to talk about football. I feel like we have to call it football now. We got, we kind of got violated. For like, don't it sounds fuck, stupid in post when you're saying soccer. I don't, like honestly, they can hate. Me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Episode two of the Back Pocket Podcast. And today we have another soccer football episode coming to you. As you saw, we were talking about we got uh, killed for calling it soccer. We're sorry. We're American. You have to understand somewhat. But welcome back, everybody. Obviously, last podcast, great success. You guys really liked it. All of our social medias, you guys were interacting with us a lot. We're back with another football episode. And we have a ton of topics today. As we will be doing for every episode until the Premier League starts, we'll be doing a transfer roundup of news that has been going on since the last podcast. That's what we'll start off with. Then we'll be going into some other topics. And as always, we will be going in at the end of the podcast, our game segment. We have a career path that we have to guess, Tiki Taka Toe, which we did last episode. And as well, we have some other trivia questions so you guys can play along with us. But Kean McDermott, Charlie Nidell, and look who's back. Dylan Shallon, ladies and gentlemen, who... I know you missed me. Yeah, we missed him. But for those who are new to the back pocket, he is part of the channel. He obviously um, has been part of the channel for most of the time. But this is his first episode on the back pocket. I haven't asked you, what do you think of the new name? What do you think of the new branding? I like it. Uh, de- definitely better than the last one. Yeah, definitely <laughs> better than the last one. But we hope you guys do enjoy, as always, for any of our you know, fans that always come back. We will be doing the NFL soon. Um but for now, we'll be doing soccer. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Transfer roundup. Obviously, not there hasn't been a lot of confirmed transfers that have gone down besides one, or besides the main one, which we'll talk about first. And I love to go to Liverpool, who have signed Dominic Shaboshlai from RB Leipzig. They triggered his release clause. Obviously, as you guys know, his release clause was set to expire on – it was June 30th, and they – you know, decided at night they were like he's gonna be worth it, and they triggered that sixty million pound release clause. Obviously, here this is how it would have went if they had triggered it after that June thirtieth deadline. He would have only been eligible to join Liverpool in the winter. Obviously, Klopp did not want that, so he came over, and Leipzig could do nothing. The players wanted it, and now he's a Liverpool player, our new number eight. To be fair, though, the last time we saw a Leipzig player come to Liverpool and wear number eight, it was not and it. Went, also, for a ton of money, it was not very successful, but I'm hoping that this will be more successful. I actually saw a really funny post. It was like Shabash Lai joining the legend Liverpool 8s, and it was like Gerard, uh, who's the other? I forgot who the other one was, and then it was like Kaita, and the, all the comments were like, why did you put Nabi Kaita in here? But hopefully he becomes one of the legends. How do we feel about the signing? Um, I, for me, I think it's a fine signing. I think Shabash is a good player. I know we talked a little bit about him last time. Yeah, I think Shaboshle is a fine player. My problem with this is, and we talked a lot about an impending formation change last episode. I don't, I don't see the formation change happening. Yeah, which I don't means think I don't see Shaboshle being super accommodated in this team if McAllister is going to play. Uh, it renders one of those signings almost useless. Liverpool doesn't have Champions League football this year, meaning they're not playing, you know, multiple games a week that they care about. Well, they have Europa League. Europa League, but. I don't think they're going to throw too much at the Europa League. I think they will. I think I Liverpool think are going to go to win it. Any any time your season yeah. has European teams, yeah. you're still I think that you're yeah. still playing Liverpool is players. fully rotating for games against like AZ Alkmaar. Like yeah, they're yeah, not yeah, playing yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not playing their squad like they would for a Champions League game. Like group stage games, I agree. Yeah. Group stage games they're not going to go out trying. They're going to advance out of the group. Maybe once they get into that later part of the season they will. But that's where, like, you know, the winter transfer window comes in and you can sign more depth if you need it. But Shoboshlai and McAllister, I think both good deals on both of them, $40 million for McAllister, $60 million for mm-hmm. Shoboshlai, but that's $100 million on one player because you can't play both of them. They're not going to play both of them. I, and it's possible that they don't even play either of them for a lot of the games this season. I actually very much disagree. I think if Liverpool get Kepram Thuram across or Lavia, I think we could be seeing a completely new starting three in the midfield for Liverpool. I, I think we could be seeing... Kepram or Lavia as that six. Shabash lies at right side at eight, which we've seen him play. And then McAllister as, I guess, a kind of another eight, ten. Or you switch them, have McAllister as that eight and Shabash lies at ten. Because I agree with you. When I first heard the Shabash lies signing, I agreed. I think I even texted. I was like, yeah, I don't really get it. Because to me, Shabash lies out and out ten, almost winger. But you heard Jesse Marsh, a bunch of the other managers have managed him. A guy who is so versatile, can play across the front three, can sit as a false nine, can play as an eight, can play as a ten. 
So I think it's a great signing. And for me, I think Jurgen Klopp generally knows – I trust it, right? Like this isn't a, a team that have been untrustworthy with their signings. They generally are good at signing players. Here's the thing. I think Shabashlai is – definitely uh, a raw talent i think it i think it'll be a darwin nunez like start for him where he starts a little slow but i think he'll be able to get into it and an underrated part of him when i was watching uh, a lot of his game highlights is his ability to pass the ball and set up plays is fantastic incredibly technical player so i think fitting into that eight role yes i agree with you may take some adjusting to especially in the premier league but i do think that McAllister and Shabash, like can 100 percent fit into the liverpool midfield I mean, I think Shabash is a perfectly molded fit for Liverpool, actually. I mean, he comes from a system at Leipzig, which plays very high, high intensity. Yep. With Jesse Marsh, with Marco Rose, the system really never changed. He was able to play and run at a, a remarkable rate, given he was playing in an advanced role. And his grafting and his ability to go, come back and win the ball, even in advanced positions, press and win the ball, is something that Jurgen Klopp is going to be able to cherish and love for a long time because he's going to be there in that midfield for a long time. I don't know how it's going to pan out with uh, Alexis McAllister. I do see what you're saying in that I don't see the the link up between the two because they kind of play similar roles, but I think if Shabashlai has to drop in and play as that eight and a pure eight, he's going to be able to because as cited, he is very versatile. Mm. He's young, he's moldable, and I think he's going to do a great job. There. No, I fully agree. I think Shabashlai is a great fit. Solely looking at Shabashlai, he's a great fit for the Liverpool scheme and the system. I just don't understand why they would go out and get McAllister if they were going to bring in Shabashlai. I don't I don't see the logic behind those two are not going to play together. Well, you see it's Man City. really difficult you see to Man do. City, they just bring they in players for the it. sake of it. M- it but it, but, it, but Man think... City plays like no other team plays. Man City's got these top-end players and don't compare Shabashlai and Bernard and Shabashlai and McAllister to Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne. I'm not comparing the Because those guys are I'm not comparing the two, but just saying Man City plays its own style of football and saying they're the best team in the world. Why wouldn't another team want to go out and sign players to challenge to become? I think Shabashlai could be just as good as both of them. I think Shabashlai could be a fantastic player because I think you're seeing Liverpool now. Their midfield, what they've for the past five years, is a possession-based midfield that plays the ball out, like plays like services. I think what Klopp's looking for now with Shabashlai, with McAllister, with if they get Kevin Thurm, are players who can break through the midfield and get yeah, into ball, the attacking third. Ball progressors, yeah. Exactly. Like, that's what I really want them to get Kevin Thurm because he's a guy who is a fantastic ball carrier, can beat a man if he needs to. And that's what I would love to see for Liverpool, especially because if you look at kind of – I think the attack last year got too much criticism because of the poor service from the midfield. I think the defense got too much criticism because of the poor – just a poor play from the midfield. So I think now you get McAllister, who I could argue could maybe play more of that eight role, Shabashai more of that advanced role because he's a fantastic dribbler. And then you have Turum sit behind them, or you have Fabinho and Turum rotating, or if they get Lavia. I think Lavia is, I think, more realistic. I'm not sure. Either of the two. Maybe they don't get either. But I do think that Liverpool's midfield is obviously going through a transformation. It was aging, and now they're looking for new players. And I think. McAllister could be Liverpool's Wijnaldum, and I think Shabash like, could be Liverpool's Coutinho. I think these are two fantastic players, and we've seen them succeed at this level. See, personally, I'd reverse the rules. I would have McAllister go more forward and have Shabash like. Yeah, I'm not. Forward. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what I've seen from Shabash like, is he has lengthy, incredible dribbler of the ball, can beat a man on any day, and McAllister to me, I guess I'm. I guess I'm basing it more off what I've seen in Argentina as a fantastic. Get the ball, play, yeah. no, really, really good distributor of the ball, but also guy, can yeah. play forward, yeah. yeah. There it is. What a... So we'll move on now to a, another one, and that is uh, Brendan Aaron. So again, we're going to go some – for the people who are European fans and not American, they will be like, why are you talking about this deal? But Brendan Aronson, Leeds player, just got loaned to Union Berlin. For us, that's, I think, bigger of a deal than to any other – football fan. No, I, I know that everyone in Germany is like super stoked to see Brendan Aronson come <laughs> play in their league. They're but I do think for Brendan Aronson, I love the move. Not high expectations. You're playing Champions League football, Bundesliga football. You go from second tier of, of English football, which I will say, I think the championship right now is better than some first tier leagues in the world. Like it is, you look at the teams there, they're great. Like it's really, really good. I think it'll it's be competitive. competitive it'll be a competitive league. No, I guess okay, maybe not. But I think it could get close. I think it's the closest it's been. That's neither here nor there. But I think for Brendan Aronson, especially at Union Berlin, I think Brendan Aronson, in my opinion, is better as a winger. I don't really like Brendan Aronson 
as an attacking midfielder because I feel like he doesn't have that ball retention ability where I like him more as a winger who can service it in, good dribbler. I just think – and I think America made that mistake at the World Cup subbing him in into that more center role where I just don't really think he's a fit there. So Union Berlin this season played with a three-back, yep. two wing-backs, three midfielders who are more defensive, and then they would have Geraldo Becker and Jordan Peefock playing up top. So I don't see – a real role for Aronson as a winger because they're having their yeah. wingbacks. They have Trimmel, they have uh, Juranovic. Juranovic. So I see him kind of playing as an advanced midfielder again, and this is MLS. He <laughs> was fantastic with the Philadelphia Union as an attacking midfielder, and when he had to drop in, he would do the dirty work again. MLS, not going <laughs> to compare to how he's going to have that to play. That is one league league. we'll be talking about rarely on this podcast. Come to me. <laughs> but uh, at Leeds... He didn't really have a stable spot. Even with Jesse Marsh, we wanted to get him involved at every turn. He didn't really have a stable place as a winger or as a center midfielder. So there, there was no real like reason to place him in either or role because there wasn't stability. So yeah. I think at Union, the way he's going to be playing is going to be as an advanced midfielder, kind of behind Geraldo Becker and Jordan Pifok or any striker they do bring in because they are a Champions League team now. They might want to upgrade. But... It's a low risk, high reward move for Union. It's a loan. Yeah. It's a good move for him because he's going to get play time there. So I don't yeah. see any downsides. Yeah, I mean, I will contest that. I, obviously, this is a great move for Brendan Aronson. This is the exact thing he could expect to happen. I think my problem is, and it's hard for me to say this as an American, Brendan Aronson looked awful this season. Yeah, Brendan Aronson looked terrible. You say he didn't have a stable role. That's because he played terribly. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's because he just didn't look good. He looked really good two seasons ago with Salzburg. He looked really, really good in the Champions League with Salzburg. He came to Leeds, had a couple good performances to the start beginning the season. Was, the beginning for Leeds was like, he looked, oh my god. He, he, you know, Leeds fans started to really fall in love with this guy, and then he just kind of wiped off the face of the earth. He, he has not played well for the U.S. since. He has not played well for Leeds since. I think this is the best move for him. I think he can start to get stable game time in Germany, and yeah. the German league operates on a very different level than the Premier League. Um... Obviously, the best thing for Brendan Aronson, the, the thing that is the best about Brendan Aronson's game is his pressing ability. Yeah. He is the highest work rate of any player you will watch play. As a Chelsea fan, you're very aware I, of his He pressing. robbed Mendy <laughs> on the goal line and put the ball in the net in that 3-0 yeah. win. This is the highest work rate player. Reminder that Chelsea lost 3 nothing to Leeds this season. <laughs> we also lost to Southampton. <laughs> um, so did we. We didn't. Oh, no, we tied. You also almost got relegated. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, fan. But Brendan Aronson is one of the highest work rate players you'll find in the world. And I think that in Germany, he could really utilize that. I think Aronson, I agree with you, Kian, is better off on the wing. Mm-hmm. I think we made the mistake of putting him in the midfield. Anyone who puts him in the midfield well, is making a slight mistake. He was playing as a 10 there, though. He was playing as an 8. With Which is even worse. Which no, is even worse. No, no, no. There's no yeah. for, for him to play there. But with, with Union, they would have an advanced attacking midfielder. Because they right, which I think is better, but I would still rather see Aronson on the wing. I would I would much rather see Aronson on the wing where he can uh, really use that pressing he, ability he to, to threaten outside backs. I don't know. That's I, I just don't think it's realistic to see him playing as a winger. Just because I, he, he I don't think it will happen necessarily in Union Berlin's formation. I think that's where I would like no, to see know, him the most. He, didn't, he never played as a winger. Not at Philly, not at Salzburg. He's, he, he's he played really on the wing into, for Leeds multiple he times. He only really jumped into the wing at Leeds, and he wasn't particularly good there. He wasn't particularly good anywhere at Leeds. But, he was, yeah. but building him in as a winger, given his bad time at Leeds does, just doesn't make that much sense because he never played there when he was playing well. I think when I've seen Brendan Aronson play on the wing, he's played much better than when he's played in the middle. Because he had moments on the wing, I think, in the World Cup. Or at the very least, I think the when he, when he played best was playing as a roaming 10 for yeah. Salzburg. I agree with that, yes. Which is, he is not a talented enough player to get that role for a team like Leeds. Or to get that role for a team like Union Berlin, who are playing in the who Champions don't even League. really have well, that role. I actually think that that's what he's going to be doing. He's going to be playing as a roaming eight slash ten at Union Berlin. I think if there's anywhere he can do it, it's at Union Berlin. Yeah. He's not staying at Leeds. He's not going to be able to play that role. It's just he, he he's not good enough to play there in the Premier League. That's why he looked better on the wing because playing as roaming ten, he went ended up getting out to the wing often enough. He ended up staying in the middle often enough. He made plays. For Salzburg, he looked really good. He looked really good behind like Adamu and. I don't even remember who else was there at the time. I think Holland was there. Holland was not there at the time. It no. was Adiemi was there. Adiemi was there. Yeah. Adiemi was there. He just moved to Freiburg. 
he he time. that's the position he's looked the best at and i think that's the like it's essentially a winger it's also essentially a 10 it's a little bit of both and i think that's where Aronson looks the best and i'm hoping berlin gives him the opportunity to play that yeah i think the bundesliga for american players is the place to go especially young in your career i think you've seen how i think the style of play at the bundesliga is uh, the premier league is a really really hard league to go to like you look at especially from salzburg it's just i feel like you have to play in a top five league before you go to the Premier League, because I really think, and it's just going to get harder and harder. Like it's obviously the pinnacle of football, and I think it, it kind of made sense. But obviously, we've seen Tyler Adams was great. Weston McKinney was not as bad as Brendan Aronson. He Christian Pulisic was though. fantastic at, at Dortmund. Yeah, Dortmund. Yeah, exactly. Not West. I'm just talking about Weston McKinney at um, uh, Leeds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Leeds. Yeah, but we'll move on. Speaking of the RB teams, RB Leipzig's star center back Josco Gvardiol. As much as it pains me to say as a Liverpool fan, looks like he's on his way to Chelsea. So this is our Man transfer – or excuse me, Man City. Guvario looks like he's on his way to Man City. Transfer rumor segment. I mean, to me, this is – the and they don't need anything, really, unless Bernardo Silva goes. Then you have a little bit of a hole there. But even then, I think that could be – You could fill that. You could fill that. I think Foden will get the chance there. Yeah. Guvario, the city, to me, is is – I don't like to use the word. It's just like unfair because now you have Diaz, who's already top three center back in the world. Gavardiol, who I argue, you know, he was fantastic at the World Cup, really good for Leipzig, left footed center back. Obviously, I think he's the most coveted center back in the world right now. He's what, 20, 21? 21, I think, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I, this is just kind of me just moping as a Liverpool fan, but Chelsea fan, Everton fan, I guess you don't really care as much, but because nothing's, you're doesn't, not winning the league anytime soon. Me at all. But obviously, I mean, there was a verbal bid for $75 million rejected. It's going to look like they'll have to do $100 million flat for him. City will do that every day of the week. They'll throw that at them. I think the deal will get across. What do we think of it? Uh, this is one that I'm actually not too put off by. I think Guardiola will have more success in a system other than Man City's, weirdly. I think that the one place where I've seen Guardiola struggle a little bit is physicality. I think... Which is a, it's a really weird one because he's got the perfect build for a center back. He's big, like he looks huge on the field. Yeah, he's, he's fast, he's strong. But I think the one spot I saw him struggle just a little bit, just looked a little bit put off in the World Cup, was dealing with balls over the top, dealing with fast strikers in behind who were able to get a muscle on him. Like Holland a, a, in the Champions League. But Holland gives every single center back yeah. in the world struggles. But I mean, even with someone like, if I was Gavardiol, I'd be nervous if there was a ball put over the top to Che Adams. Che Adams does a great job getting past center backs and then <laughs> putting a, a body on someone. <laughs> Out of all the strikers, I, Che I, Adams. Genuinely, this is just the one that came to mind. I don't, I well, don't think this guy Adams would... in the championship, so he yeah. don't have that problem. <laughs> but I think that Gavardiol, if there's one place he struggles, it's where Man City is the weakest. If mm-hmm. Man City... There's, there's no way to score against Man City unless you're putting balls over the top and you're hoping to get a counterattack goal. I think that's one place where... Nathan Ake looked fantastic this season, and Gavardiol, that's the one place where he lacks for me. I think playing as the left-sided center back for Man City, because that's where he'll be, that's Nathan Ake's role, I, I prefer Ake right now. I actually, okay, so I don't hate, I think it's the kind of saying where it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it yeah. with Nathan Ake. But I would argue Gavardiol, in terms of counterattacking defensive center backs, might be the best to have in the world. He's really fast. Obviously, I, I guess he did struggle with the the physicality part of the ball or uh, of of the game. I agree though because I think I mean it's it's so tough because it's like a luxury for Man City. Like they can go get Guardiola, but Nathan Ake was fantastic. He's not super old, you know. Obviously, they won the treble. Like really, what can you do? But I think for City, you need to be making moves because you don't want to get too yeah like happy in that place. Like oh, we're gonna win the league. We're gonna go win the Champions League again. So I get it. It strengthens their team obviously, but I do agree that it's like. Why did you need to make the signing? But again, it's like you know, it's it's a tough thing to say because it's like he's fantastic, but you don't need a. I agree. I don't think you need him, but I will say, and this is again in the Bundesliga. I know the Premier League has a higher rate of physicality, has better strikers, but I didn't see him get put off at all with long balls at Leipzig. I was watching in the World Cup. It was there was, and this is maybe playing in the Croatian back line that wasn't super strong necessarily, but this is he looked to me. Premier League is the most physical league in the world. Yeah. Gavardiol, don't get me wrong. I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's worth every penny of $100 million. Yeah, I agree. The problem for me is I don't think he's worth every penny of $100 million when I prefer Ake for Man City. 
Well, here's the thing. Ake, as great as he was, he did lack some things in passing and Volk progressing, where Man City are looking to improve from the back. Obviously, they're pushing stones into the midfield now because they want to improve that back, and they know that stones is too important of a ball movement player to have at the back. So they want to improve that spot now, and I think Josko Gavardial gives you exactly what you need from a left-footed center back where Ake, he was excellent, but I think that's one spot he was lacking was as a ball progressor Mm -hmm. and as a distributor. You see Gavardial at Leipzig. I don't know how much anyone watched of the Bundesliga. I watched a fair share of the Bundesliga this season just because I have nothing to do, (laughs) and I watch a lot of soccer. So... He, him, Simikan, Orban, all excellent ball progressors for Leipzig, and that was the reason that they had their resurgence in the second half of the year, the reason that they gave Man City a challenge in the Champions League tie they had, and Gavardiol, I think, is the perfect signing if they want to bring in a ball progressor. Again, $100 million, even for Man City, is not a small sum of money for a team that already has great center backs, so do you need him? No, but why not? It's like saying, do you need, did they need Holland? Like, they probably could have. Uh, no, Holland, yeah. Holland that's, won them. that's the one that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Holland won them. But basically. even then, they won two Premier Leagues before that. Yeah, though. exactly. So, but it's the kind of, yeah. So it's really who do City need. But I agree. I think Gavardiol is the one center back in the world I think you would ask every single team would take. Young, proven. One, one of the center yeah. backs in the yeah. world. Come to mind, you got Gavardiol, Kim and Jay. Before that Champions League disaster class, Upa Meccano. Yeah. I mean, Araujo. I, I mean, well, if you I'm, think Araujo, 24. Kim and Jay, 26. I, I, if, it, if it's me and, and I'm Man City and I'm looking for a perfect fade, I'm looking at Matias De Litt. I think he's a much better player. But Matias De Litt's had his down years in Europe in the past few years. Uh, playing with good, Juventus. He didn't have a good year at Juventus. He didn't have a particularly good year here, this year at Bayern. I, if, I'm, if I'm looking for an yeah. ideal center back for Messi, ball progression, one of the best tacklers in the world. Yeah. Fantastic. Matias De Litt, and you could probably get him at the same price. I think you have for cheaper. Delit wouldn't cheaper. be a hundred. No think, way. Dilit from Bayern, I think you. I think you're paying a lot of money to get him. I disagree. I think Gavardiel is a better player, and I think Gavardiel is a better fit. I fully disagree yeah. on that. All right, we'll move on now to another one. We'll talk about Romeo Lavia from Southampton. Obviously, rumored to go to Liverpool. What do we think of that deal? Because Lavia, to a lot of people, isn't a true, true six. Mm-hmm. And Liverpool, like as a Liverpool fan, you need like stop. Okay, I love Shabash, I love McAllister. I think they're great signings. We need a six, not a six who can, who an eight who can play six, not a six eight. We I'm need a six. I'm wondering why you guys gave up on Fabinho because I still. Think, I agree, I still and think I've he's been, got it. I've been saying the exact same thing. I think Fabinho hasn't had it for years. Really, two years at this point, he has not no, looked good. The year before, he's I great. fully disagree with that. The, Fabinho, I think, has been the best midfielder for Liverpool besides this past year for the past. Three years. Uh, I would argue I Jordan Henderson's been their best midfielder just because That's Jordan cool. Henderson's playing week in, week out. No. Fabinho's no. been injured. <laughs> no. Fabinho's been <laughs> Fabinho has been injured half the seasons. No. Fabinho has, has is actually Fabinho, I do not Fabinho, excuse me. Fabinho has not been an injury prone prone player. He this has season, over the last couple of seasons. Season was, this season, I agree, but I don't think I don't think overall, because obviously we saw when we had that center back attached for we had freaking Nat Phillips starting for us, Fabinho at the slot in his center back. I think over the injury plagues that Liverpool have gotten, I do not think Fabinho has generally. You, I don't think you can dub him as an injury prone player. No, I'm not saying he's an injury prone player. He's just been injured over the last year or two. A few times. He plays and such an important role, though, so it kind of makes he, sense. He plays a hugely important role. I think he's just been a bit off the pace the last couple of seasons. He hasn't looked like the Fabinho we remember from a how many years seasons? Ago. So this is. I'm saying maybe a season and a half. Okay, that uh, I don't even think so because I, I'm forgetting that two years ago Liverpool were contending to win four trophies. Yeah. Um, and Fabinho to me was you talk about Delit best one of the best tacklers in the world. Fabinho is a fantastic, I guess out of six is is one of the most fantastic tacklers. What I will say is going back to Romeo Lavia, if you're gonna go and play McAllister and Shoboshlai, you have to have someone like Romeo yeah. Lavia behind them just because he can run so yeah. much, and you need that if both of them. And I think Shoboshlai is a great grafter, and I think McAllister, given his stature and given his playmaking ability you'd expect him to kind of just be a little messy in the midfield yeah, and not really good. track back he runs yeah he, he grasps Here, here's things. what i'll ask you and as a non i'll answer this after would you rather i guess whatever would you rather do you think fits better would you rather have Turum or lavia if you're liverpool i would rather have lavia what do you think Charlie? because there, uh, you, yeah you know with lavia there's no there's no uh learning curve there's no learning curve yeah yeah Perfect. what do you think Charlie? I agree there's no learning curve, and that's why I would want Lavia, but I think, as you said, Lavia is not as true of a six as Liverpool need. 
Lavia is. But would you rather have a stationary six like Fabinho? Yes. yes. You'd rather have a stationary yes. six. Absolutely. If you're Absolutely. playing, so. if you're playing of, five true attackers. But then, if you have a stationary six, there's Mc- so much space in the midfield. I don't think it's five true attackers. I think McAllister. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. McAllister to me is not a, is an eight. I think like an an advanced eight, which we have been saying nonstop. But I don't. I and again, you disagree. I think Shabash I would play ahead of him as like, you know. Not a false nine, but like someone who's kind of behind. Well, I can see that happening. I definitely could, but I just know that Shabash like can do the. Eight no, I agree. I know he can also, but to me, in my in my head, McAllister makes more sense as a facilitator who kind of sits in the middle of the field and Lavia behind him or Thurm. No, Lavia like Thurm because he can advance the ball through. When 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 it comes to Lavia versus Turam, my Lavia is a Premier League proven player, and in my opinion, after through the countless years of Premier League I've watched, the pivot is the hardest position to play in the Premier yeah. League. Because that is a position that very few players can survive at. You put a young player at the six, you like think twice. Like, don't do it. Romeo Lavia has proven that he can do it. I think that if Liverpool can reform Lavia into more of a six, into more of that bona fide pivot, he's always there to build out. He's always there. He's there to recover. I think they need to do that a little bit. I think Turam is a bit more of a mature player right now. Mm-hmm. That's where Liverpool could benefit from him. But I think Liverpool already have a bunch of mature players in the midfield. Thiago, Fabinho, Henderson. They don't need another Curtis mature Jones, player. Thiago's going to be out of there. He's going to be in Saudi Arabia or in Turkey within the next few days. You think so? Yeah. I, I, I honestly hope that does happen. Because I feel like, I don't know. It just didn't he's work so in- No, I actually disagree. I think Thiago was fantastic. I think he looked really good. I think Thiago was really – Thiago is the type of player where it's like you would rather have someone who has – like this is the same thing. This is a great point. You'd rather have Wijnaldum, who is healthy and is every game a consistent seven, but Thiago, who's not there and then is a ten mm-hmm. for a game. Thiago, to me, when you like, given the just expectations, the, every important. touch of the ball he has, yes, no, he's, is he's a just fantastic player. Fantastic. His passing was amazing. I thought it was a great sign. I mean, when I, I think we were two years ago when they got him. Um, I loved the signing. I thought it was a really, really good deal. I think you, it was like a. That's what I'm saying. Given the expectations, I feel like yeah. it was just kind of underwhelming. But no, I think the signing didn't work out, but he still looked like a really, good player. A really good player. Yeah, yeah I get. But what would you define? I guess. Point I guess. being, though, yeah, you want a mature player in there. That's what you're saying. And I think Romeo Lavia, he is young. He is all over the place sometimes. But I think that's what Liverpool kind of thrives on with their they're just chaotic. And no, that's I think what they I mean. Be able to do that. Yeah. I just don't think that that Lavia. I I think Lavia is the better player for Liverpool, if they're playing a veteran presence with him. I think he's sitting in front of Van Dyke, which is going to be hugely helpful mm-hmm. because because he'll get yelled at a lot. It's Virgil Van Dyke. <laughs> I think it would be amazing if they played him next to Fabinho, yeah, as an eight. But that won't happen. And Shoboshlai is a new Premier League player. Um, Nunez, Gakpo, both new Premier League players. Diaz is a new Premier League player. It's it's Liverpool. The team is a, it's a lot of relatively young new uh, Premier League players that I think Lavia will have more success with Van Dyke on one side of him and Fabinho on the other. That's not going to happen. Though. It's not going to happen. That's the problem. Like Fabinho is a center back? No, no, I just mean... Oh. Just I don't mean with on one side them. and another side. Mm-hmm. I just mean like almost fathering him into the game because he's young yeah. and he's erratic. Yeah, well, I don't field. think if Lavia... If he's they, incredibly yeah. talented though. If they sign Lavia, I would do not think he will start. I don't think he would start. I think he would. Really? I think he would. If they went and brought in Romeo Lavia, I think he would start. I don't think they're going to bring in Lavia. You don't think I, so? I think they're going to keep this midfield. I think they're going to yeah, keep Yeah, I don't, you think, don't think they'll bring I, in I, don't, I, don't, I think I think if they do, it'll be next year. Yeah, maybe. I don't think Lavia will go. Because I think Lavia I could would. benefit a lot from a year in the championship. He won't do that, though. He'll, no, he'll, no. He'll end up in hey, Germany. I, I'll, I'll take him at Chelsea. If he doesn't end up at Liverpool. I don't. I think Liverpool have one more center mid. I, think they, I don't think they're they're done. They might not be done. They're not because we know they're not going to sign an attacker. We don't need a goalie. But center you, back, I think, would be the other one. If you think about it, you have so much depth in the midfield. You have Fabinho, Curtis Jones, Bajatic, the guys you just brought in. Milner is still technically rostered. No, Milner's no, he's, he's no, no, he's on Brighton. Oh, Milner's on gone. Brighton. Yeah, yeah, Milner's gone. Do you not know that? I did not know that. No, he's <laughs> gone. Where, where I think that Liverpool also won't sign Lavia right now. A player that I actually really liked last year was. Bicetich. Yeah, I really like. I think I, I spoke about how hard it is to play that pivot role. I think he did a really, really good job of it for a seventeen-year-old. Yeah. I yeah, think I next year, if they just keep giving him more and more time, mm. 
uh, he he is one of the few players that's looked really good yeah. at that pivot spot for Liverpool in the last couple of years. I think Bajcetic is, you know, maybe not as talented, maybe not as good as Lavia, but he has looked really, really good when he's played. He's been sloppy, but that's to be expected from a 17-year-old playing for Liverpool. He's too small for me. Bajcetic is a small dude. He's small, but he's Slim. he puts in a tackle when he needs to. Yeah. He's a good ball progressor. Really, really good on the ball. Great passer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I really like Bajcetic in that six role. Yeah, I agree. If they can incorporate him. I just don't think he's defensive. I yeah, I don't, I don't, and his stature isn't big enough. But, yeah. but, but also, like to to compare him to a player, Jorginho, is small, not very defensive, but, that team but had still plays the pivot. Not for most of the time. Conte was injured for most of the season. No, but you're talking about when, but no. what, when Jorginho, uh, yeah, at his best. I'm talking Jorginho even looks good in the midfield with Kovacic, and Jorginho looked good in the midfield with Kovacic. Ruben Loftus Cheek. But Jorginho and, and Bajic are very different players. I think stature wise and ability wise. They're not so different. And right now they are because Bicic is a 17-year-old and useful. Well, we're talking about next season. But I'm talking next season. While they're different players, I think they're similar. I see where you're Similar for, enough skill set wise. I see where you're coming for, but if I'm a Liverpool fan, I don't feel comfortable starting Bicic as the six. I just I, uh, mean give him experience. Yeah, I don't. Because I, I think, think he could turn Bi- into Bi- a player. Bicic was just a, a, a byproduct of we had a, a ton of injuries, so we kind of needed him to start. And he was great. Yeah, he's really, really good. But... Yeah, I I don't love him as a six uh, to start the season, but I mean again, I I am all for giving chances. So I guess you saw he was very good, really really good, really good on the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I, I I agree. I think I think it's it'll we'll see what happens. But our next rumor, and we have two to four minutes per player, which we're going over. But what can you do? De Gea leaves Man United on a free transfer. Obviously, we thought the I thought the contracts were progressing. I thought he would resign. What do we think of that, and where do we think he will go? Where can he go? Where hey, he'll go back to he'll go back to Spain. Not, hear me out. Hear me out. There's an opening for a goalkeeper in Spain. You've got Barcelona, Ter Stegen. No, no he Turstegen. won't go for a top team though. He's not that good. He's not going to end up at Malaga. I think he go back to Bilbao. He never went to Bilbao. He was never. He was. Bilbao. I thought he started at Bilbao. He started, at Bilbao. He started, he started at Sevilla or something. Atletico I thought he went to Madrid. Yeah, Charlie. Hear but me they out. They have Unai Simón. Hear me They're out. Not gonna go but he's going. He's going. Your Chelsea Onana doesn't work. I don't want to have. I think De Gea is a very viable I, option for Chelsea. I, I, I don't want De Gea. I saw that you don't. I, I, that's your opinion. But I think De Gea. I'm Chelsea, I'd rather keep Kepa. Yeah, me too. But I think De Gea might be a signing that they go for. If I'm Chelsea and De Gea is a free agent and you don't get Onana. As to where David De Gea ends up. Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. That was my next thing. I think it was either Saudi Arabia or the MLS. I think De Gea will probably end up there. If I were to guess. Or yep. I guess maybe in the MLS. But I do think if De Gea is like, look, I want to stay in Europe. I think Chelsea could come calling. De Gea I think Chelsea no. could come calling. No, no, no. De Gea is not ending up in the MLS. The roster construction protocols and okay, but whatever. general allocated money stuff. <laughs> <doesn't> <laughs> out, so. But but on the Don't topic of De Gea, I <laughs> <laughs> David De Gea. The the expression they all use is David De Gea could save the Titanic, but if you throw a rock at him, he'll let it go past <laughs> him. David De Gea can be the best goalkeeper in the world. And he can also look like Loris Karius in the Champions League final. It's happened far too many times this for season, him to stay yeah. in the Premier League. That Brentford game was horrific. Too many mistakes. Was that this year? Yeah, it was. That Watford game two years ago was really bad. No, it's the, it, he has the same thing, Charlie. It's the ones where it goes in his hands, it comes out. It's the ones where he d- he dives, there and it's actually, like the ball's there, and then it just pops out. There was like, a, how did that? There was a five-minute video on YouTube. I, I wonder if you could show a clip for it. It's David De Gea refusing to use his hands, and it was just a compilation of balls that were like supposed to go to his. <laughs> the hands. ball that went through his, his legs this year. Yeah. yeah. It, sorry, it, not for me. That Gakpo goal that the one Gakpo chipped it. De Gea should have had that every single day of the week. The fact that Gakpo was able to just dink it over him on like the hardest angle was. Or uh, NYCFC goalkeeper. <laughs> oh, Luis Barraza. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll move on now to we're past transfers. This is an interesting one. I really want well, to hear what you guys have to, to say. Transfers. Well, back to transfers. <laughs> okay. Transfer from last season. We'll start with Dylan. What is your biggest transfer flop from this past season in any of the top five leagues? I'm not going to go for one of your big Premier League guys. I'm going to go for Charles De Ketelare from AC Milan. He that is for- definitely not how you say it. It's Charles De Ketelare, no? De Ketelare. Oh, okay. Sorry. Continue. It's, uh, he was in Milan squad for 37 of 38 matches in Serie A, right? So didn't get injured, right? Not a big problem. 35 million, not that big of a sum, right? 
You're expecting him to go in and play in that role that Brahim Diaz played in last year. They're missing a cam. Even though they won the league, they're missing a cam to really facilitate play, right? Seems like a pretty good signing. Young, experienced in Europe. <laughs> One goal contribution the yeah. entire season. It was an assist in a 2 nothing win against Bologna in August. So... <laughs> After that, he had zero goal contributions, given he played in every game other than one. In the Champions League, he played in every game other than two. So, what went wrong? Starting 11 nine times in the season, only twice after the World Cup. What went wrong? Brahim Diaz wasn't particularly good. What went wrong? Terrible in front of goal, terrible on the ball, terrible in every place, and yet Milan want to go back to him. Brahim Diaz is back at Real Madrid this season, and he's expected to play as the 10 if the Christian Pulisic role doesn't fall through. And I wish Milan fans the best of luck with that. Next. Do we not? Pulisic would start as a 10? Yeah. Forgot about Pulisic. We could have included him. But, uh, okay, so mine, and this one it may not shock you, but just what I'm about to say. Jesse Lingard was so... You You look at... I don't know the word. The words don't even. The words aren't even there. But but I don't even know if you guys know this. I'm gonna say it again. Mine is Jesse Lingard. Obviously, has the beginnings at United. Oh, great player. Goes to West Ham. Fantastic half year loan spell. Nottingham sign him. Oh, Jesse Lingard will bring him in. We gotta stay above. Like we won't get relegated. He has the experience. Was really good at West Ham. He was so good at West Ham. Won them a lot of games. He didn't have an assist. Or a goal the entire season. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. He didn't have assisted warming. No, he had nothing. He didn't have an assist or a goal the whole season for Nottingham. Look it up. Yeah. No, no, this this is last. This is this season. It won't show me last season. I I promise you. Which to me, like, look, you can look at all the big clubs, but to me, Jesse Lingard, it's so disappointing. Because it's a Nottingham team that was looking to implement Jesse Lingard as this leader, someone who will score them goals, someone who will be a player to rely on. And he was as reliable to give them literally nothing. Like, literally nothing. Zero goal tra- contributions is embarrassing. I yeah. could give you I more mean, goal contributions. I saw the link with him in Inter Miami, and I don't think he'd start in that team. <laughs> nah. Well, it's, I'm, pl- I'm playing. I'm it's playing. just to me, it's. Inter Miami are last in the Eastern Conference. For me, it's it's embarrassing if you're Chessy, Ling- if Chessy, Jesse Lingard. I think you should leave. Um, yeah, it's honestly me ranting at at Jesse Lingard because I was I was a little angry when I heard that. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Z- like nothing? Like literally nothing? At, at yeah. least an assist or a goal, like a tap in, nothing." Who's your player, Charlie? You guys went for more low profile signings. Um, Anthony. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insert I the was, clip of him spinning. I, <laughs> I was very close, honestly, to saying Mikhailo Mudrik, just because he signed for all the money. But I think so that, Anthony. but they signed for the same amount of money, and I think the expectations for Anthony were so much higher. I don't think it was, Anthony was. I was think he the expectation was a hundred. I just want right. to put it out there that Anthony was the first player outside the top five leagues to go for over eighty million. He yeah. Signing. Well, Mudrick, and then, and then Mudrick followed and then Mudrick that up. And then I'm Enzo sorry, but and, like, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, Anthony was. So unbelievably atrocious this year. <laughs> it's watching him play. They genuinely would have been better off. I, I I rarely ever say this. Only when Mark Kukurea plays do I say this. They would have been better off playing with ten men on the field. It's like that player because under- Anthony was every time he had the ball, he lost it. I watched with my dad. I watched Manchester United games. My dad doesn't watch a lot of soccer. He watches with me when I watch sometimes. Uh-huh. Every time Anthony had the ball, lost it. Every time Anthony was given the ball, it was a shot that went wide, a shot that got blocked, a dribble that was taken from him, a touch that went out of bounds, a pass that went straight out of bounds <laughs> or to the other team. Anthony didn't retain the ball a single time. And he didn't all do season. enough of the spins to make yeah. it worth it. Right. Anthony's no, like exactly. that. Anthony's like you're that only player. getting around 30 million yeah. a spin. Like it's just yeah. not <laughs> Anthony's like that that player on your club team or on your like school team, they get subbed on, you're like, "Oh my god, come on." Like yeah. that player who's like they just it's literally that player. Like yeah. That player that you just, the player you just, that they just throw on the wing because it's like they'll have the least damage. So you just put them on the wing because they're so terrible at the sport. <laughs> and it's like they paid extra. That's the only reason they're allowed to be on the team. All of us, we've all played. All of us have had that experience. There's one kid on my team who's been on our team for five years. I'm like, how is he on our team again? He's so yep, bad. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're all shaking our heads. It's if, a comment if you have that player. That player where you're like, come on. And the coach plays him in like the last five minutes of the game because they feel bad. 
and they do nothing and they like run like yeah, a headless chicken. I, I, I think you you know you you brought up disappointment when you, when you were <laughs> when you were talking about Jesse Lingard like it was just disappointment for you. The disappointment I think was for Manchester United fans when this happened. They were so excited to get Anthony into this team because he looked so good for Ajax and for Brazil, and then. I think he scored in his first three games. Yeah, no, he scored. Each of his first three games, he scored a goal, and they're getting all excited, and then he didn't <laughs> score again all season. And he looked terrible, and he was benched to Bencho himself when he came back. Bencho this is crazy nickname. This is... Sancho. <laughs> that's Jaden Sancho. Yeah. Just I think uh, he was benched to the emergence of Garnacho. He was benched to Jaden Sancho after he came back. He was downright terrible. It, it, there's no more to it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think he was the Lukaku of this season. Yeah. Lukaku going to Chelsea for $100 million, Anthony going to Manchester United for $100 million. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll move on now. We'll move on now to our next topic, and this is the opposite of flops, and that is Manchester City. Obviously, once we get later to the season starting, we'll obviously do our, our table predictions, but... I'll just pose this one line or two. Can any team beat City in the title this year? Or is it that symbol? Do we think that they've lost the hunger after three years of winning the title? No. <laughs> I want to say yes. The only know. thing they've lost is the captain, which is a big deal. Gundogan is a big deal. But he didn't even start every game. Yeah. It's a, it's a big deal because they don't have anyone to straight up fill that role. That being said, they'll figure it out. This is Manchester City. They'll put they'll put Gavardiol there, and he'll turn into the best centerman in the world. Like I it's. I play Julian Alvarez <laughs> as my six, and then move I... Rodri into Cam, and he will win. I mean, <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought this would be a bit more of a talkative segment, but I guess it's that quick. But no, this team is the best team in the world. Yeah, it's it's not it's close. slightly ridiculous, and I think it. <laughs> Here's the thing. And back to the – I would think you guys would give me a little more contest when I said they would lose hunger, but you all said no quickly. So I guess I guess I thought I thought wrong, but – You don't lose hunger for winning. Not lose it's hunger. Just I guess a... well, no. It plays into what I'm going to say because if they win this year, it will be the first team ever to win four titles in a row, which is ridiculous. They're going to do it because no, who else is going to do it? <laughs> who oh, – that's fine. Who, in your opinion, will challenge Man City the most? Because I at this topic went to the bins quickly. <laughs> Liverpool. Liverpool. It's a hundred percent Liverpool. Liverpool to me. Liverpool and Arsenal. Those are the two. I I think, know who my top four is gonna be. Yeah. I don't think any of them will truly challenge Manchester City. I think if there will be one, it will be Liverpool. I think Liver. I th- I wouldn't be surprised if Liverpool win the title. I think this will be another season where it's the one point margin comes down to the last game I think Liverpool were, will contend with City the whole season because I think we've brought again I think we're missing maybe one or two signings but a, a second year for Nunez a second year for Gakpo Diaz healthy I think this team will rival City because City obviously I think we touched on it earlier the Gundogan loss I think is huge Gundogan was the best player in the world at the end of the season I guess Holland, who was on the same team. Tough no. Tough I think, I think Gunning on, okay, maybe not the best player, best center mid in the entire world. He was incredible. When you look at, and a lot of people just look at the goals, but just his distribution, his leadership for City. No, I fully agree. So I think the loss for City is going to be big. There, I don't think there's a really a player in the in the world right now who can play the role like Gunning on did. Obviously, that makes sense. But yeah. maybe they'll try Phil Foden there. Foden, I think, obviously, I, I don't think Foden will be able to fill that role. Well, short. I think the difference is there's no one that can fill that role when you look at them when they're not playing for Man City. I think that even if you look at Gundogan before he went to Man City, you wouldn't have ever imagined him turning into the player he's turned into. I think this is more of a... and I, I don't want to take any credit away from Ilkay Gundogan. I think he's a really, really good player. I think this can be almost more so attributed to Pep. This is a systematic thing. That Gundogan, you, I couldn't tell you what position he plays for Man City. Because he plays 6, he plays 8, he plays 10, he plays 9. He does he does, he does, does all of it. Ilkay scored two goals at the end of the title race last season to win them the title. Yeah. Gundogan scores big goals in the Champions League. Gundogan scores big goals in the Premier League this season. Gundogan also makes big tackles to save goals. Gundogan is... Like the the most rotating midfielder, 
he doesn't play a position. And that's why looking at the rest of the players that don't play for Man City, you can't find a replacement for him. I think it's doable to find a replacement for him. I think the now this is obviously not a replacement looking long term because this is, you know, also a player who's close to retirement. But Luka Modric is the closest player to Gundogan yeah. in terms of the way they play six, eight, ten. They do it all, and they do it all in every single game. Even Modric and they play each perfectly. Even Modric doesn't, Modric doesn't score as many goals, but Gundogan doesn't beat as many players. Actually, no, I do think there is one other player. Rakitic, I think, is similar. But not, Rakitic not, is criminally it's not, underrated. But it's, the, but it's not the I same disagree. Thing. I think Rakitic is... Rakitic was excellent this year for Sevilla. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But that was a team that was mid-table in Modric. Yeah. So but I think not. this is just... Ilkay Gundogan, the role he played for Manchester City, when you look at the team sheet, Rodri wasn't the 6 because Gundogan was the 6. And Gundogan wasn't the 10 because De Bruyne was the 10. But every time you watched, Gundogan was playing 10 and 6 at the yeah. exact yeah. same yeah. time. At the same though. time. There's no one in the world that can replace Gundogan. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Until they go to Man City and, and Pep sort of yeah. tells them to play 6 and 10, and then they look pretty good doing it. Yeah, exactly. They won't look like Gundogan, but I don't think this will hurt them as much as losing Holland or losing De Bruyne. Here's the thing. They have Maxime Perrone, who they brought in, who I think could be a very, very good player. I think he needs a year at Girona before yeah. he really comes into the City team. But I think he is a good option. Yeah. yeah, sure. But I think this is really strangely like this could be like I could be totally wrong because I've only watched this guy play like a couple minutes. But like, what about Rico Lewis? Yeah, well, that was. I know he's a right back by trade, they, but, but he, he also position, like. Really. But what, what he, like like what is a position? Like John Stones is playing in the midfield. I think we could even see John Stones step into the Elkai Gundogan role. I would not be shocked by that. I I think yeah yes I I think yes, I, I, I would only be shocked by John Stones stepping into the Gundogan role because he played the John Stones role so yeah. well. I I think this is really a, a a spot that there are multiple players at Man City that they could play it. I would not be surprised with multiple of them doing it. Yeah, speaking of and this is completely off topic. Speaking of midfielders playing a lot of positions. Did you guys know that Spain in the Euro final started six, five midfielders? I didn't know that. I, saw I don't know that, if you knew that. that it was like Fabregas is the it striker. Was Fabregas is the striker. Iniesta on a side. David oh, Silva yes, on a yes, side. Yes. Xavi Alonso and yes. Uh, Iniesta Xavi, Xavi Alonso. Uh, Xavi, Xavi and Busquets. Uh, Xavi Busquets, and Busquets. Busquets, and Busquets. Busquets, Busquets yeah. yeah, sorry. Just, I watched, some, I watched some, that game in Spain. That was pretty yeah. special. Just some quick facts for you guys. That was pretty crazy, speaking of good midfielders. But yeah, I think, if back to it, I think if there's one team to contend, I think it will be Liverpool just because we know they have the identity and obviously the history against City where they've beaten them. And, you know, Liverpool have dominated City for seasons upon seasons. Obviously, City, the past couple ones have, have been fantastic. But I do think the Premier League, the reason it's a great league, we always say these things, and then it's completely what we didn't think. So... No, I, I think for this season, if if I'm expecting one team to challenge, it'll be Liverpool. But I don't think, I think it'll Arsenal be a. Could. I don't think it'll be as true of a challenge as it was this year. I think this will be a situation where Liverpool are sitting five points off City for most of the season, ready if City slips up, but they won't. Yeah. Speak. And then you know eventually Liverpool yeah. slips up, and eventually it could it could end up being a ten point season, but I think it it will be closer. Because yeah. a lot of people say so. Uh, the biggest. So Arsenal, I believe, or maybe it was Chelsea. Um, the big, like the the most games ever, like have left since I'm, I'm explaining this so badly. Had at the top of the table, had at the top of the yeah. table and like you you have five games left and you've already won the league. I think it was sit uh, or not City. I think it was, it was Chelsea. Out Chelsea five had six. five games or four games left, and they had won. They had won the season with, or they had won the league with four games left. Yeah. People are saying City could do it with like seven. That's not gonna happen. No, because that would require a twenty-one point lead on top of the table. That's a lot. What a lot of people are saying. That's not gonna happen. It, it's it's too. I much. think the it's one record. I, I think the one record city will uh, no uh, no team will ever break is the fifteen goal in an entire like that letting in fifteen goals. That, I, I, incredible. Um, that's the one record I think city will never break. But every year we say I don't think city can break this record. I don't think city can break this record, and they go do it. Seven games to me is ridiculous. As a Liverpool fan, I don't think it'll be two games. I think Liverpool will be head and head. But a yeah. lot of people think. Yeah, I mean, I think there are, the City team will be really, really good. But I think, again, there will be certain records they don't break. I think that, that Chelsea, if I was six, 15 goals in a season, won't get broken. Arsenal Invincibles, they won't go invincible. I, they won't. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 don't see, <laughs> they, they won't, but I don't see City going won't. invincible. <laughs> they won't, but like it's City. I don't think they'll repeat Champions League. Yeah, I agree but, in that. But this is a this this city team is 
going to win the league. And if you don't think that, you're too biased of a fan. Here's what we'll say. And, and when we talk about title contenders, a lot of people think, for some reason, I've seen this agenda going around, Arsenal last year was their only chance to contend for the title, and now they'll struggle for top four. I agree. No. What? No. How could you ever agree with that? Because they're only strengthening. Uh, they're only strengthening, but I think this is a team that, when it came down to it, what happened? They fold, sure. But they're still going to be capable of making Champions League. I think what, Arsenal what, will be what, capable. No, 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 they of... might be capable of making Champions League, but are you saying that Manchester United or Newcastle competed for the title this year? No. So... This is a Arsenal completely folded when one player went down to injury. But it was a And big now they're player. playing champion it was a big player. Yeah. But now they're playing Champions League and Premier League. They're not improving depth. They signed Declan yeah. Rice and they signed Havertz, but they lost Jacques on Parte. We got Timber. They're they're looking to sign Timber. Timber will they, But this they, is a team that Timber. has added one player, plus minus. Yeah. All right, so Depth, where they I, just Balogun. don't compare. But but where I see that as a fallacy is that every time that their depth stepped in at a point last season, Reese Nelson, every time he stepped in, fantastic. Every time Fabio Vieira stepped in, he looked very good. Every time I, I said stepped in, he looked very good. Kivior, every time he stepped in, he was okay. No, 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 they lost the season because yeah, Kivior was playing. They lost the season, no, I wouldn't say it was Saliba that. got injured, and they proceeded to not win any more games. But there's Jordan Timber. Yeah. Right. So they signed Jurian Timber. I don't think Kivior was as bad as people make him out. I don't. Th- no, 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 no. Kivior himself did not play terribly when I watched him play. The team folded without Saliba. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as much the players that were playing in front of Saliba. Bukayo Saka Saliba goes down there. with an injury. This is not the same Arsenal team compared to oh, Erling Holland goes down with an injury. Alvarez is still a top fifteen striker. But in that's the world. why we all say City's going to win the league. But it doesn't give. But Arsenal, that's where it doesn't take Arsenal out of contention. Uh, f- for the title, for me, Arsenal is going to struggle to play both Champions League and I really like Mikel Arteta as a coach, and I think he will figure it out. I think they'll be fine. I don't think they're going to have a bad season. They're they're not going to have the same level of a season as they did this year. That's reasonable. I agree, they, and I think I think the only reason that will happen is because I don't think they have they first of all they don't have the personnel that has Champions League experience. I don't think have their starting eleven. Jesus a little, Odegaard maybe on the bench for Madrid. Ramsdale doesn't, Saka doesn't, Martinelli doesn't, Declan Rice doesn't, Saliba doesn't. Timber doesn't. What are we talking about? Cha- Champions League experience. Oh, Champions like League experience, This team, yes. to me, I think no, 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 they balancing don't, they don't Champions have League and the Premier League is going to take a big toll on them. So I mean, that's Gab- the Gabriel league. Jesus is the only player on that team. And, that, has, and Zinchenko. And Timber. Those are the only guys that have legit Champions yeah. League experience. But I, I think, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I have some, some opinions when it comes to Arsenal that I'll save for like final predictions or whatever that, you know, have still yet to fully develop because we're still a month away from the season starting. But I, like, I will go with, I don't think Arsenal have the same caliber season as, as they had last year. I think if there's any team who will compete, it's Liverpool. And Arsenal might be 12 points off the title. I don't think that's, I yeah. think Champions League football is definitely, definitely still on the table. I mean, there's no, like, this team almost won the league last year. No, Champions League football is definitely yeah. on the table. But you gotta think, this is an Arsenal team that for... Well, it was 95% of the season? It was the most by about 40%. 95% of the season were on top. And then beat, one player uh, got yeah, injured. Yeah, no, but here, I know. One, one, they were ahead of the team that a lot of people are arguing is the best team we've ever seen play mm-hmm. in that City team. Like, they were ahead of them for a lot of the season. Yeah. So. I think, I think Champions I think League. There. I think the Champions League screws with everything they've built. Yeah, I agree. I think the Champions League messes with their mentality of we play the exact same 11 players every single week because you can't do that in the Champions League. That's true. And we saw it, they, they crumbled in the Europa League. They, they did. crumbled in the Europa League. Yeah. They so didn't I, go anywhere in the Europa League. Yeah, So I th- and I think it was an Arsenal team. If you look at their form last season, the Europa League should have been an a easy go and win it. No, it, was a walk in the, it should have yeah. been a walk in the park. Yeah, exactly. But we'll move on now to talk about which – so this is here we go. This is a good topic because we, you know, we talk. We're we're in depth. We're we're analyzing a team. We need to pull out a little, have a little bit of fun. Which, which, which professional footballer do you think would have the worst life if they did not play football? Okay, I'm gonna say mine, and we're not gonna <laughs> talk about it after I say it. So we're just gonna move on to yours after I say mine. But I'm gonna go with Gilfie Sigurdsson. Oh. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to Keen. Who do you have?
<laughs> that's do, a good one. I do agree. To with be that, fair, yeah. that's a good one. I didn't even think of that. Okay, I have Harry Kane, okay. and Harry Kane. Before I say this, big fan, really good striker. I think you're great. Love to meet you, dude. He's ugly, <laughs> and he's like illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think for Harry Kane, unfortunately, he would just. He doesn't. You can't really have a job where like communicate. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he could have a job where like communicating is a big part of it, because I think there are a lot of other jobs in this world. Yeah, no, I agree, and no, thank God he can you, shoot a ball. I'm, but imagine him talking on the phone. Yeah. Like, like people be like, "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> well, how, oh, you know, had a good game. Oh. I can't even do it. Like it's it's his boy. Uh, There's some dude on TikTok who does a soap. Yeah. <laughs> Great game, yo. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, this is a, this I this might be the I, only time we can have this. We this is a. I hope he doesn't try to be a pundit. Yeah. I really hope. Oh no, that would be great. I'm gonna get to spit on me for watching it on TV. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Harry Kane. But again, great. Right. Like I, you yeah, know, big no, fan, uh, this is great. one of the best strikers yeah, in the world. Huge, so. huge fan. So I haven't gone for a sexual criminal, <laughs> and I also haven't gone for, and like, just like. Your your reasoning was good. I went for more of a, a fitness take. I think Aiden Hazard would be morbidly obese if he wasn't a footballer. <laughs> because if you if you hear what people said about him at Chelsea, there were recounts of him of just n- him never dieting, never going on nu- the nutrition plans that the players had. Dad. Hey, whatever it was worked. No, no, <laughs> uh, I, think it was I don't John, care. I think it was John Obi Mikel who said it. I might be wrong. Who said he would just live in his own world and then turn up on game days and be the best player in the Premier League. At Real Madrid, <laughs> obviously it caught up. didn't work. <laughs> it, it didn't work as well. So I think if he was not a player, he would not. live the same lifestyle and yeah, I, I think you might need like a wagon to carry him around. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, that was a God. That was a segment. Holy. Yeah, one that uh, will probably not be in another video. I don't know, man. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. I mean, we might need a rerun. <laughs> all right, well, but this is hard to go down to a serious topic, but uh, all right, we'll move on now to back to Chelsea, who we talked about a lot last episode. Obviously, Pochettino, they announced him, appointed as their new head coach. Obviously, Chelsea fan here. What do we think of the move? Because he's going into, I wouldn't say it's a train wreck, but this is a team that's in vast disarray. Like, they don't really have an identity as a team right now. Yeah. So, we'll go to you first. What I guess when you look at, like, does it work? What do you think he needs to do? Because he is going into a project of a team right now. And it's a weird project because it's a team that should be a title contender, a Champions League contender. Yeah, hey, won the Champions League two exactly. years ago. Exactly. So, he has quite a job to do. Um, I think this is... Maybe the best manager we could have brought in for this team. Uh, Pochettino is a proven manager. He worked at Spurs, and they didn't look bad. How many trophies did they win? How many trophies did they win with anybody? Yeah, that's to be fair. No, but, but, but Pochettino was there for a long time. He was the best part of their project. Chelsea is a team that has money, stature, history players. at this point. Players. They need a manager who can win trophies, right? Pochettino didn't win trophies, but nobody who's ever coached Tot- Antonio Conte won trophies at, tro- at Chelsea. Yep, didn't do it at Tottenham. He had, he had half a year. He had half a year. No, because uh, uh, Mauricio Pochettino had five, six years. He won. The nothing. the the thing that I struggle with yeah, yeah. with Pochettino, and I think Pochettino is yes, maybe the best manager we could have brought in at the time. He is a great player manager. We have a lot of players that need to be managed. <laughs> a lot. I think he will. He he will he will do his best to give this team an identity. And if there's a manager who has an identity when playing, it's Pochettino. And I think that the problem he's going to have is Chelsea, for the last 20 years, has been like this. They're not going to be as patient as Tottenham was. Tottenham gave Pochettino five years, and it didn't work out, and then they let him go. Chelsea, if things haven't improved within a year, he won't be there for a second. I pray that they've improved enough to keep him around for a second. Here's where my problem was with Pochettino. He is completely reliant on the players buying in. But he doesn't know what players he's going to have to buy in because you're at the whims of Todd Bowley just saying, oh, I want him out of there, bye! (laughs) Like, it doesn't add up for a coach that you need to have strategic players in strategic places for Todd Bowley to go listen to Twitter spaces and listen to what the fans want him to do, <laughs> go on Football Manager, seeing who has the good potential, 
and then just like go on it as if it's a stock trade and buy whoever he wants. It doesn't make sense to have a manager where you're reliant on a project. Spurs, every time Pochettino wanted something done, he would go through process. He would do it because they trusted him. Chelsea, you have an owner who's treating the club like it's a FIFA career mode. So it's not going to work. He's going to be out on his ass in a year. And, and I love Pochettino, but when he went to a team that had players that were bigger than the club, which I think Chelsea's going to end up having at this season, Neymar, Messi, Mbappe, none of them listened to him. Okay, he, but he we don't have Neymar, Messi, Mbappe. You don't have that, but you have players that don't care about the project. You have players that haven't bought in. So Pochettino's going to need to unite 25 new who... players. No, 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 25 but... new players to play in Pochettino-style ball, which hasn't been in fashion for the past five years. Not happening. But what you haven't noted is the players that haven't bought in are the ones who are out the door right now. The players who are staying are the ones who seemingly have bought into this project. Every, every player they've signed is, I'm really excited to be part of this Chelsea project. But what else are they going to say? Are they going to say, oh, no, I wanted to go to Liverpool, but Chelsea <laughs> gave me more money? <laughs> you, you don't even have to bring up that this is a Chelsea project. This is a... I'm excited well, to be a Chelsea project. Why are you not going to call it a Chelsea I mean, project when they've spent over $400 million in the past two windows? Those players haven't left. Well, obviously they haven't left. They came in January. <laughs> right. So how can you what say you that gonna, these what players... Are you gonna do? You're going to be so, with Kyle Mudrick, you're going to sign for $100 million and then leave the next so, <laughs> Okay, in all fairness, that's what Lukaku did. And then yeah. also... Yeah, <laughs> and, and also, how can you say that those players aren't going to buy in? You don't know that. I don't know that, but it's very difficult to have 25 new players buy into a new manager. It's not like you have, n you have no stability, and Pochettino thrived off stability. You absolutely have some stability in this What's team. What's stability? Thiago Silva. That's one player who's been on the for three years. Okay, Reese sure, James. Sure. Fofana. Fofana's Fofana 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 the back line. Oh, 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 stability. Chilwell. Oh, oh, I'm going to be completely honest, and this might not be what, what you want out of a team, Tiago Silva is genuinely all the stability I need out of a team. Good luck. I, Tiago Silva has been our best player over the last three seasons. Fair. Tiago Silva is, Which is the a little best veteran center back no, in no, the no, world. Tiago Silva is a great player. He is 39. He will not be here for more than two years. That's what we said when we first signed him. And Now, I agree with you. But he will be here for long enough that you can at least attempt. And it has he gives enough time... That you can start to formulate this project. I'm so, not saying it will happen. So, so I'm a fan of what Pochettino's done, by the way. From, from right from right from the start, he went and he had a barbecue for the players. He's trying to get them acclimated. He's trying to create a community in the club, and I like that. But I just don't think it's realistic to unite 25 new players in one season with an owner who's going to gut it up once you lose your away game on Wednesday to Brentford. <laughs> uh, which is going to happen. He's going to be like, oh no, that's not good enough. We got to get rid of these guys. Yeah. So like, I, don't know I agree. I think I don't know well, here's why the I'm thing. Trying to sound more American. Than <laughs> that doesn't I think Pochettino to me is a fantastic coach, but I think he's a guy who goes into a team and he needs organization. And Chelsea are the least organized club in terms of players. No, I think Pochettino world. goes into a team and creates organization. But I think Chelsea. It's gonna take to me, more than that. I don't know if you guys remember Tottenham. His first season, he he wasn't comp comp particularly organized. He he started his first season at Tottenham. I believe they finished fifth. It took but, him a while. But that's where I believe. That if Chelsea can be patient, this project could end up putting Chelsea back on top of the world. Do you expect Todd Bowley to be patient? I, he has been there for one year. It's his first time ever managing a soccer club. Well, do you know what he did? <laughs> you spent three hundred million in January and finished twelfth. Okay, but that you doesn't. You fired two coaches. And I think that if he had been patient with those coaches, something could have happened too. He do has not shown to be patient. Billionaire baseball owner nothing about soccer comes to his mind thinks he's on top of the world does not give a flying expletive <laughs> about soccer i'm gonna call it but soccer because this is an american segment <laughs> do you think he's gonna change a thing but i'm confused as to where we're disagreeing here i don't think that you realize what's coming you're just out being of my louder mouth. i think you're just being loud <laughs> i'm not saying no, like that you. todd bully is going to give pochettino time and i started i, I, thought, I, thought I started this entire segment <laughs> By saying over the last 22 years, Chelsea have fired coaches like this. And they will And that again. wasn't just Bully. Yeah. That was Abramovich too. And they've won the Champions League twice. So I think that if they give Pochettino time, it will work out. I don't think they... And that's where I think the only way that Pochettino will be given time, as I said a few minutes ago, is if they see drastic improvements this season. 
Well, anything's a drastic demotion. Which I think, like you said, no. I think for Pochettino and for Chelsea, it is going to get, like you said, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well, it I, will be easier because you only have one competition to play in. Like, that's yeah, but that's I also another think good thing. That the drastic improvements won't necessarily come in terms of positioning in the table. I know that's what these billionaires, billionaire owners are looking at. I know that two seasons in 12th place doesn't look like a drastic improvement, but I think this team could drastically improve and finish 12th place in the same season. Would you like that? No! It's not... <laughs> what do you want to say? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd, I'd love, love to finish in 12th place again. <laughs> no! I would love to contend for Champions League, but it's not realistic this season. I think this team can drastically improve by changing the club culture this season. And I'm telling you, if they do that and they still don't make the Champions League or they don't come fifth, Pochettino's out. Yeah, it's which, very which possible. Charlie's, but, Charlie has been but, saying that. But also... Finishing fifth place is not something that was in the cards for Graham Potter. Not something that looked possible for Frank Lampard. Oh my God, I forgot about Potter. Because Potter. you had you you say that finishing fifth place and he's still getting booted because they're not in the Champions League. Finishing sixth place, he's still getting booted because they look terrible. Graham Potter never came close to that. Frank Lampard never came close to that. This is not a team. The twelfth place is so much further down than eighth place. Mm-hmm. That if Pochettino finishes 8th place, even ninth place, that is a drastic improvement from 12th place. It's not good enough to keep his job. I think it very well could be depending I don't on think how it, the, I agree. I don't think it's good enough. I think, depending on how it looks, we finish 12th place without 40 points. We finish 8th place with 55. Yeah. That's totally good enough to potentially keep his job. Points. I agree, but Charlie, time and time again, you have... This club has proven that their owner is a child who has picked up a remote, gone onto a video game, and it's like, I want this. That's totally fair, but that's where I think that Pochettino is the perfect manager. Yeah, I agree. I think Pochettino's not in charge of him, though. No, but this is Graham Potter was at his second job ever. Frank Lampard was at his essentially first job ever. Where was Potter before Bryce? Oh, right. But. This is their first experienced manager under Todd Bowley, who I think will give a stable head to yeah, Todd Bowley. I agree. I think that's where I say, if there is any manager in the world who can do it, it's Pochettino. Mm-hmm. He may very well be out on his ass in the next year. Or if you got Nagelsmann, but that was... Like, no, I don't even think Nagelsmann provides the same stability as Pochettino does. Because he doesn't have Premier League. He doesn't have Premier League experience. Yeah. I think if there is one manager who can do it, and I'm genuinely serious, it's Pochettino. I, I, Again, I he could be it. out in a year. It's totally possible, and it's very realistic, and I respect that opinion. But if there's a way that can change, Pochettino is the best chance at changing that. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I, I agree. I think Pochettino's a great manager, and I think it's just an impossible position to go into. It's, it, is an impo- it, it, is, it is impossible. He has his work cut out for him. Yes. But I agree. I think you look at arguably one of the most experienced managers in the Premier League right now. So. That was fun. That was good. We'll move on now. And that was our uh, – that was a great kind of last topic to end off. We'll move on now to what I love to do, what we also love to do, what you guys can play along with us is some games. I don't know, some soccer, some football games. But I have uh, – okay, so we're, we're going to do your Tiki Taka Toe first. Okay. Okay, let me – Let's run it. Tiki Taka Toe Part 2. Charlie set up the board. Let's see it. Also, for those of you guys complaining, we, we are not competing to get three in a row, so call it Tiki Taka Toe if you want. We're competing whoever can get the most squares. Most squares. This is, and, and, and at the end, if we can't get any, we're, we're all working together in this yeah. one. Or at least the two of them are working together because I know these answers. No, no we're not we're, working together. We're, at we're the competing. end, if, if they don't know an answer, yeah. they're working together to try and figure it out. This is not, we're not playing three in a row to win. We're just trying to get these squares mm-hmm. done. I know we had a couple people say that this is not Tiki Taka We're also not blah, competing blah, blah. with any other TikTokers or yeah. Instagrammers. We are just trying to do this. Like yeah. We're, yeah. We're, not, we're not stealing. Yeah. This isn't a new concept. <laughs> we're, we're trying to play yeah. a game. It's not that. Okay, not here is the board. Oh, Al Nasser's on the board. Al Nasser's oh. on the board. Oh. Okay. okay. Let me just, let me so, just okay. take that. I'll Dylan, take, if you want to start easy. Okay, I'll Dylan, take Ronaldo, start. won the UCL. And Cristiano Nasser. Ronaldo. Okay. So easy one. Okay, for mine, I will go with Italian, won the Champions League. This is very embarrassing. I can't come up with this whenever I get on the spot. Italian won the Champions League. There's 
so there's, I know, there are so many. I, I know there's so many, but I, it's for me when I like it's on the spot. Okay, the Champions League won this year by Man City. They don't have any Italian players. Who was the last Italian? I'm trying to think. What was the last Italian team to win the Champions League? It hasn't been for a long time. You can think of one from that team, though. I mean, Ju- Juventus won the Champions yeah, League this in is 2017 a, or so, 2016. Yeah. And I know, oh, I, I know for Serbia final. and Benfica, it's their keeper that went to Roma. I know that's him, know that and I don't name. know his name. I know that name. Uh, but I'm gonna go. Al Nasser had played in the Bundesliga, but not, not Bayern, not or Bayern Dortmund. or Dortmund. That's Al gonna Nasser. be the tough one, isn't it? I know one that played for Bayern. It's not Ziyech. I. It's not. I'm gonna give the answer that I think you have, and I think he has played for Bayern, for that one. I'm gonna go. No, Brozovic didn't play. Hasn't. Uh, no, Brozovic hasn't. Um, I'm gonna go for. Oh my god, this is like really embarrassing. Actually, I don't know why my brain is completely blank. Won the Champions League, plays in Italy, or is Italian. Oh my god. Oh no, Buffon. Jesus Christ. He did win the Champions yeah. League. Yeah. There are tons of tons. Of there tons are so of many Italian. more I could have gone with, but Buffon. Buffon, Champions League, Italian. That was very embarrassing. Um, I mean, you've got Jorginho. Yeah, Jorginho. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking I Emerson Palmieri for some reason right yeah. from the start. But um, and then you can go back Maldini, and look at Maldini, Maldini and Cannavaro. Exactly, like exactly. It's, okay. You have a plethora of options okay. there. I'm going to go... Okay, so this isn't my guess. Let me add. But I want to say that if your player for Al Nasser and Bundesliga, if that is Luis Gustavo, he did play for Bayern at one point. Is that who you had? It is, because he also played in the Bundesliga other than Bayern. Okay, so that's gonna, I'm going to put Luis Gustavo, because okay. I know he played for Wolfsburg. Luis Gustavo. He played for Hoffenheim, actually. He played for no, Wolfsburg and he as played well. for Wolfsburg. Uh, okay, Bundesliga didn't play for Bayern or no Italian and Benfica. I got I'm, that one. I'm not gonna get that one. Dylan's gonna. Be I know this. Dylan knows that one. Uh, Italian uh, played in the Bundesliga. Oh, Vincenzo Grifo, Freiburg. Oh, I had that. That's a good that, one. Was, that was on top of my mind. Yeah, that's only because I'm doing a Freiburg career mode right now. <laughs> but Vincenzo Grifo for Freiburg, Sorry, Italian. For Italian and Benfica, I'm gonna go Brian Cristante. Oh, does he play there now? No, he's on Roma now. Oh, so he played before. Oh, okay, sorry. He played at Benfica way before. Before he was at Atalanta. Okay. For, okay, now it gets a little tough. Benfica, Al Nasser. That's Benfica. Benfica. Sorry, and then Keen, you said this one, right? Serbia plays in the Bundesliga. Ooh. Grifo is water in Sp- uh, tap water in Spanish. Oh. So that, that's why that's, that's, that's <laughs> What's the question? Uh, okay, so, okay. Serbian plays in the Bundesliga, but not for Bayern or Dortmund. Serbian. Is. Okay, I'm trying to think of this. Oh, Malinkovic. Oh, no, 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 no. Ooh, that's not the right league. Um, <laughs> hmm. Serbian. That's a tough one. I don't know that one. Al Nasser and Benfica. I have no idea. Do you know that? I do. How? Won the Champions League and is Serbian. That's another tough one. Um, I got all these scores. Let me think. Serbian won the Champions League. Let me see if I can remember Serbian. This one. Who's a Serbian captain? Yeah, I'm gonna skip. I don't know. I've, I, I'm run, I've, I feel like I've run out of time. I'm gonna go with the Benfica and Serbia one just because I know I can get it. Mile Zvilar, yeah. goalkeeper. See, I didn't know the name. I knew the player though. It's also Luka Jovic. Yeah, that that would have worked. But Mile Zvilar is also correct. Mi, Mi, oh, Jovic. Is he pl- where, when did he how, play? How do you spell that? M I L E S V I L L A. When did Jovic play for he Benfica? He played for Benfica at the very start of his career. Okay, Mile Zvilar. This guy? Yeah. yeah. He sucks. Yeah, I was going to say. Really? <laughs> He's horrible. Oh. oh Jesus. He's young. I hope he doesn't start next year. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Al Nasser and Benfica. This has to be recent. This but is I, not a player who joined this window. Yeah, see, then I have no idea because I don't – I only know. But champion – okay, Bundes- the Serbian ones. Serbian, okay. Let me think. You have 
Oh, that's on Leverkusen. There's someone on Leverkusen who's Serbian. No, Dragovic. He's not on Leverkusen anymore. Is he? Uh, I don't know. Is Dragovic still on Leverkusen? He's not, and I think he's also Austrian. Oh, he is Austrian. Shoot. But you could have played him even if he wasn't on Leverkusen anymore. You could take former players. I know, I know, but it doesn't even count. Uh, okay, who else? Leverkusen, Frankfurt. There's got to be someone in Frankfurt. They generally have those like Eastern European. Uh... I was going to say Leanheart, but he's an Austrian. I, I, I know, like, five of them now. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think. The one I'm thinking of is just so out of the box, but I'm just Yeah. Gonna... Uh, can you just do one that's in the box that I don't have to spend 20 minutes looking it up? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did Tadic play in the Bundesliga? Let's see. It's possible. Dusan Tadic. I that's going to be my so guess. Good. Dusan Tadic. No. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Damn it. No okay, Bundesliga. I think the El Nasser, Benfica Square, Anderson, Taliska. Oh. I just put the only players I know for El Nasser. Bro. So it's... Oh, that's actually really annoying. Anderson, Taliska. Okay. Um... Okay, let me think now. Okay. Serbian played... Oh, I got tic tac too. Oh, you did. Who is Serbian and has played in the Bundesliga? Who is it? Tadic was a good guess. Tadic, It's yeah. like, you know, one of those guys along those lines. Yeah. But... Um... Is he in the Bundesliga? Because I think, like, past players... What are they... Milinkovic Savage, the goalkeeper for Torino. Did he play in the Bundesliga? Not that I'm aware of. I don't believe so. I think he was I think he's homegrown pretty much. Or played at probably Red Star. Actually started at Manchester United, but Ah, uh, okay. Never that's another wrong answer for me. Damn. All right, I'm go gonna down. leave that score open because I want to hear you try again. Yeah. I'm gonna go UCL winner and Serbia, Dejan Stankovic. Sorry? Dejan Stankovic. Dejan Stankovic. He, he played on uh Inter Milan in twenty ten. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. What about, like, Vidic? Oh, yeah, oh Vidic, that, right. That would have worked, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, I was going to say, you, I thought you gave it away there for the Bundesliga one, but Vidic never played in the Bundesliga. Okay. Dylan, you're going to have to give me this one. You're going to have to give me some time. Just because uh, whenever I definitely have more recent knowledge, but I do know, I'm trying to think. The Serbian national, the Serbian team that played at the World Cup, I don't think any of them play in the Bundesliga. Milinkovic Savage, both Milinkovic Savages, no. Tadic, no. Oh, Jovic. Jesus, Luka I'm Jovic an idiot. Luka Jovic, him. Frankfurt. Oh, my God. Thinking, okay, so was, Serbian Bundesliga, you, you Luka Jovic. That's actually very embarrassing. I was thinking very just in the Stasic. I was also thinking yeah, Lazar Samarjic. Klasenak. Filip Kostic. Oh, no, Klasenak is it. Filip Kostic. Kostic yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. That was the lock. That was, you just yeah. That was so much quicker than me and Serge's one. All right, there it is. Okay, here's now. Here's my one. I know them off the top of the head. My segment. There are four players. The top four players who have had the most missed chances in the Premier League. I I think like I know I know some of these. Okay, so you have to name the exact position that they are in. Okay, I'm gonna go on my phone just so I remember them. But I will go. So there are I, four I players. Think, I think I might know all four of these. I think I... Do you think you do? I, I think we'll, I know We'll go these. back to back so we can make it a little fair. Okay. Okay. Charlie, who do you... Who, you I'll have go, to guess a position, though. You have I'll to guess go number one. one, Erling Holland. Yes, correct. Erling Holland has the most with 28 missed chances this year. As weird of a one that is. As weird is, as a one that is. Erling Holland missed who, a lot. Who do you think? Is, do we have to go in order? Yeah, it has no, to No, you good. can pick whichever number you want. You can want. pick whichever number. I'm gonna go with four Mohamed Salah. No, that is not right. I'm th- I'm saying four Darwin Nunez. Yep, Darwin Nunez is four with twenty. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Here's I, the thing, because I, Salah's tied. Okay, we'll get Salah's tied. I believe at Salah third, and Darwin and are three and four. But I who don't is know. who is two? We'll go back to you. Who's two? More than twenty, less than twenty-eight. I know this. I know this because I talked about this in class once. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. 
It's Marcus Rashford. It is Marcus yeah. Rashford. Wow. Ball knowledge. Marcus Rashford is two with 22 missed chances. Mm-hmm. I'm going to Char- – Charlie, I already posed this one to you just because I want to pose this one to Dylan because I want to do a, a which team to all four players next podcast. You're going to get this quickly, but I just want to see how fast – well, this is how fast is your ball knowledge. Right. Who? Which is the team that all four of these players have played for? Okay. Emmanuel Ogbonna, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Chiro Mobile, and Aaron Ramsey. Juventus. Yeah. That was easy for it me. Was, so. It was about as quick Juventus, for me. Charlie, yeah, was, I asked was... Charlie earlier how fast your ball knowledge. There we go. But, Dylan, we'll do your career path now. Okay, so my computer died. Oh, okay. But I think I can remember it. Okay, so, career path. All right. So, Guess the players based on the career. Dylan, go ahead. He started at Girona. Uh-oh. Okay. He went to Man City. Okay. Went on loan from Man City to Real Valladolid. Back to Man City. On loan to Sporting Lisbon. Bought by Sporting Lisbon. Bought by Tottenham. Oh, Is Pedro, Poro. Pedro Poro. Pedro <laughs> Poro. He went to Valladolid. There. Pedro Poro. That's yeah. right. I didn't know about the Spanish roots. But, yeah, but you know, then the, when you the said Lisbon. Sporting, yep. City Sporting Pedro Tottenham Poro. a bit of a Pedro Poro. Well, there you go. Yeah. That ends it. Yeah. Wow. That felt very fast. Hopefully you all respect us now as football soccer fans. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. If you are watching, make sure you do subscribe to the channel, like the video. Obviously, we post clips on Instagram, TikTok. Go follow us on all of those social media platforms as well. And if you are on YouTube, check out our podcast on Spotify. If you are on Spotify, please give us five stars. Give us a glowing review. We hope that we deserve that if not i mean i guess i guess do do your worst but once again kian mcdermott charlie nidell dylan shalom thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time